Okay, folks, so we're spending the day in Halifax today, but we're starting off about 20 kilometers um, outside the city at the Eastern Passage. Yeah, so we are made our way here to Fisherman's Cove in the Eastern Passage. It's a 200 year old refurbished fishing village. So it's sort of meant to look like it did back in the mm -hmm. past. We are just arriving. It looks super colorful and cute. It's full of shops, artisans, and delicious restaurants and places to eat. But we're gonna venture in. Let's go explore. Okay. All right. Put your butt in this parking spot. I sure did. Husband parking. <laughs> and we're sitting here now by the water. Really cute space here. And there's a couple, the Boondocks restaurant looks like it has a gorgeous patio. Um, so that would be a fun place to come and eat. And lots of picnic tables and benches if you're grabbing treats like this. There was an ice cream and candy shop too that we might have to venture into. So a couple other things that you can do in this area. There is a ferry to McNabb's Island. Um, so that's something you can do here. And I think just walking the boardwalk, I'm not sure how uh, far the, board, the boardwalk goes out, but uh, beautiful walking path. So I think this is worth exploring just to sort of For get sure. out of the city of Halifax and do something that's a little more like quaint um, fishing village. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously, like we said, it's a refurbished. It is meant to be a bit touristy, but I think it's worth the stop because it's really sure. well done. Everybody, we've had a slight change of plans. Um, not that we had it in the plan, but Sadie had other plans. She's got a flat. We pulled out of the parking lot, heard a weird noise coming from the tire and pulled over only to find that one of our rear dualies, um, the inside one actually, is flat it's so flat we could just uh we can feel it with our hands so way back in there oh yeah so we do have caa we've placed a call um they cannot tell us how long it will be but that they will call us when they're on the way so we're not sure that we're going to do all the things we want to do in Halifax today after all. Um, luckily we heard it as soon as we were pulling out of the parking lot. So we pulled back in. So we are at Fisherman's Cove and that's the view behind us. So we could definitely be in a worse position. And I think Mitch is trying to, are you trying to dislodge that uh, good spare the tire? Spare bit? tire, yes, yes. Okay. Because we don't want to wait if it can take a couple of hours because we have a lot to do in Halifax <laughs> today. I'm really excited. <laughs> However, this is the first time we get to change a tire on Sadie. So also equally as exciting, maybe not equally, but also exciting. That is Mitch's opinion. I'm, I don't know why this is exciting for him. It is, <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> Okay, so Mitch is excited, that's great. I'm excited that we are safe in a parking lot and this didn't happen when we were going down the highway. I'm super grateful for that. Um, so, we'll just see how all this goes. This is intense. What are these doing? So, the tire is mounted on a rack and this lowers the rack underneath the vehicle. Okay. Well, it's supposed to anyway. Is it coming out right now? It should, something should be happening. Okay, Mitch has successfully released the tire. I have. All right, it's down there. How's it feel? Oh, it's a knife. It feels hard. That's good. That's how we like our tires to be, hard. Okay. Oh, that looks like it's seen better days. <laughs> well. All right, it's hard though, that's good. I feel there might be a new tool in our future. I agree. What tool would that be, man? Well, it's going to be an impact. <laughs> That's for sure. Like one that we just sold before we uh, start traveling. Hot tip, and maybe we'll do a video on this in the future, but if you are selling all of your things to travel abroad, 
before you sell all the things, just really think about what you really might need, <laughs> depending on what your lifestyle is going to be following your selling of everything. I think we're in good shape. So we'll come back in a few. Okay, Mitch is kind of my hero today because we are not waiting for CAA. Still haven't got a call yet that they were coming. Pretty sure we probably would have spent most of the day here, which wouldn't have been a terrible thing because I think I said it before, but if we had to be changing a tire or stuck somewhere waiting for help, it's not too shabby of a spot. Alrighty, the tire is changed and we're back on the road. It just took us maybe about a, an hour, I think, to, uh, to get it all changed, but uh, we're heading to Halifax now. Not too bad. So, uh, yeah, we're only an hour, maybe an hour and a half behind schedule. So we'll see what we can get done. We're still going to head to our next spot that we had planned. Um, we're definitely deserving a bite to eat soon. So we're going to have to check out a Halifax specialty for lunch. And uh, we'll see you at our next stop. Okay, we're making our way through Halifax, so just one thing we wanted to let you know, if you're going traveling through Halifax and you're crossing over to Dartmouth or over to Eastern Passage like we just did, there's a couple of bridges that get you across the Halifax Harbor. Um, we're about to head over the McKay Bridge. I think this is the one we've gone back and forth over. And just so you're prepared, it's a $1.25 toll. <laughs> crossing the McKay Bridge, which is actually sort of the northern bridge or northern end of the Halifax Harbor, because we are headed to the north end because we want to check out a cool spot. It looks like you've literally stepped back into a little village in England from the pictures I can see. So we're gonna go check it out. Hydrostone Market. It's in the north end of Halifax. It's on Young Street. If you Google Hydrostone Market, Google Maps will get you there. It is actually a really small neighborhood. Um, there's one main street that's got all these really cute shops, um, places to eat. So hot tip would be do not come on Sunday because it appears that most of the stores are closed. We did pop into Halifax Cheese. They had some Spanish cheese for us, so we picked that up. They also had homemade ice cream. There's lots of cute places that have cafe bars. There's a place called Salvatore's, which I've actually heard of before. So not being from Halifax, it must be pretty good. So the story behind this village is, it was actually destroyed. It was made of mainly wooden buildings back in the 1900s. When the Halifax explosion happened in 1917, fire destroyed basically this entire neighborhood. So in 1920, uh, someone was commissioned to sort of rebuild this neighborhood and they decided to do it in hydrostone. So this for the day um, was copying sort of buildings that were happening in England, which is why we have this really beautiful, charming English village looking look. And this is the hydrostone. So the idea was it's non-combustible and if there was another fire, um, it obviously stands up so much better. So all the buildings in here, which are mainly all um, townhomes and brownstones are all made of this hydrostone so come and give it a visit just don't come on a sunday it's still lovely there's a park across the road there seems to be lots of parking and it's just it's a cool spot i think to spend a few hours and now we're moving on because i need a dawn air <laughs> you know that looks really cool the harbor hop on hop off except it's not Oh, it's not. Oh. It's not hop on, hop off, it's hop on. But the harbor hopper drives around the city, does a tour, and then splashes into the harbor and becomes a boat. That's cool. 
cool. That's what that does. Halifax does have a hop on, hop off bus. So again, if you're gonna be in the city for a couple days, you may wanna explore that option um, because you just get to see the highlights and then you can go back to the places that looked interesting to you. We're just up here at the Citadel Hill in Halifax now. And to get in? It was 11.25 uh, per person. Not sure what the rate for children was, but 11.25 for an adult. However, we have our discovery pass, so we get in for free. Okay, you have to check this out. So the wall is so thick. Like I'm not sure how many feet or meters, but... Uh, we entered there. Like a lot. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. What, Mitch? No, it, it just amazes me how they built this in the late 1700s, early 1800s. It's crazy, and I think this is the fourth version of the fort. And um, yeah, something interesting that happens every day at noon, um, the firing of the gun, or there might be a, a better name for it. And we were supposed to be here for it, and we missed it because we had a flat tire. <laughs> so next time, we'll hear the uh, firing of the gun. Yeah, apparently the gun fires every day at noon, even on Sundays, and it can be heard pretty much all over Halifax. But we were in the Eastern Passage, so we didn't even hear it. <laughs> this is wild. Look at this. Halifax City was founded in 1749 because of Citadel Hill. The British military could easily defend the harbor below from the large hill that overlooked it. Today, the Halifax Citadel recreates history daily with the 78th Highlanders and Royal Artillery. They are dressed like the regiments from the mid-1800s. Visitors can walk around inside and out, literally touching pieces of military history. A visit to Halifax really isn't complete without a trip to the Citadel. I'm gonna dress like a soldier. Oh, I'm gonna be a gunner. Okay, so I wanna be a gunner. So I have to put on my artillery coatee and unbutton the shoulder straps. Okay. Okay. To unbutton the shoulder straps. And I can put this on over your shirt if you want. Well, of course I will. Next I'm going to, this is my sword bayonet, has to go over my right shoulder. And then I have to get my cartridge box. I have to sling it over my left shoulder. Oh, oh I need a hat. But I'm not sure they had sunglasses like that. I'm ready for battle. Yeah. Okay, this one looks a little. Welcome to Harborfront Halifax. <laughs> We're actually have a lucky day here. We have the Blue Nose 2 is in at the docks behind us. It's sort of late in the afternoon. We're looking for a nice little drink. Yep. We've had a busy day that included Changing a tire. Changing a tire, some things we didn't expect, but we've made it down here. So we're just cruising the Halifax Harbor Front. There is never a shortage of things to do or look at down no. here. You can do a million boat tours around here. There's lots to see and do <laughs> and lots of restaurants and pubs and you name it. And it's a beautiful, are we Sunday? It is, yeah. yeah. A beautiful Sunday afternoon and mm -hmm. everything's open and alive. Lots of shops and For sure. ice cream and snacks and beaver tails. Uh, there's a museum, there's Pier 21 down here. It's, I think, four kilometers of harbor front. So there's lots to walk, see, do, and keep everybody busy For of sure. all ages. Anyway. Um, I think we're gonna find ourselves a little patio. Yeah, I think that's a you in? That's needed. I'm in. Let's do Let's it. Do it. So we might have waited a little bit too long to try to get a seat on a patio because 
there was live music which we wanted to get into um some of them had like a steep cover like 12 dollars a person we just weren't ready to well we weren't gonna tonight. yeah we weren't gonna stay very long we just wanted yeah. one drink so that seemed to add a lot of cost to our drink yeah so we're actually going to just head out we think we have an incredible boondocking spot tonight uh we are headed to the iconic peggy's cove lighthouse we wanted to get there for sunset and we do believe that we are able to boondock there and we're gonna have a little dinner so at peggy's cove we're just gonna head there now yeah let's do it all righty Good morning everybody. I had to share this with you because we boondocked last night at um, Peggy's Cove Lighthouse. So after hours you are allowed to park your RV here. Um, we are joined by a few others. There's about three other uh, camper vans RVs here. Um, but this is what we woke up to. It's a great place to stay. Um, we did have, we did eat supper at the restaurant here at Southwestern, and we spent the night here. We moved the van over to this end of the parking lot, which when most of the cars cleared out, which was after dark, a lot of people are still here for sunset, but it's beautiful and spectacular and worth it. And if you have a van and nowhere to stay for the night, this is a pretty amazing boondocking spot. You get the sunset, in the west and when you wake up in the morning you've got the sunset uh, coming up on the other side of you. trying to get the drone up but I just wanted to add a few things because you see the site to Peggy's Cove and you might think it's not accessible if you have accessibility issues but they've actually constructed a beautiful um, viewing deck here behind me you can see the lighthouse you can hear the waves you can see everything crashing on the coast so they've done a really nice job to make this as accessible as possible for people so uh, that's the gift shop and restaurant. There's some washrooms there as well. And then this big viewing platform that stretches all the way out, sort of overhangs there. And there's the lighthouse. So you can still get your epic pictures with the lighthouse in the background. And they have these lovely Muskoka chairs scattered about as well. All right. This should definitely be a spot that's on your list to stop if you are in the Halifax area. Okay, we're just uh, packing up, ready to leave, and we're doing our good Samaritan duty. Um, we do appreciate the free camping that we get, and we always try to just pick up trash that we see around the area because we want these places to remain free. We think it's really important that we do whatever we can uh, to show respect and leave no trace. So we do our part where others have maybe failed. So please 
if you are taking advantage of this, and even if you're just a tourist, pick up your trash. We don't want to ruin these beautiful places. Keep them nice for our kids. Be sad if you ruined it for your own children. Good job, babe. Be respectful, folks. Do the right thing. <laughs> Take all your trash away and maybe help and clean up some trash <laughs> that was there when you arrived. back to Halifax because we just didn't have enough time here for one day was not enough. <laughs> one day was not enough to see everything that we wanted to see in Halifax so we're back today. And we're um, on a ferry we're heading to George's Island. Yep. So yeah today we're gonna do George's Island we're gonna see how long we want to explore around there and grab the ferry back. Uh, there's a ferry schedule again because we have our discovery pass our entrance was free because it's a, or a national park. The ferry ride was 13 a piece, I think. Yeah, 36 with tax. Yeah. There it was. Not sure if the GoPro picked that up, but uh, the noon gun just went off on uh, Citadel Hill. This would fire three kilometers and it would sink ironclad ships. That is just nuts. Three kilometers. That's pretty nuts, eh, buddy? <sighs> There's a bunch of underground tunnels and there is a rumor that there used to be, um, or there is an underground tunnel from, George I from George's Island to the Citadel. Where we were yesterday. Where we were yesterday. That's pretty far. Well. I don't know if I believe that one because that would be quite a feat that happened, you know, a long, long time ago. So whether you're a history buff or you just want to get out and explore the island, this is actually a fun tour to do. It's nice. You can bring picnics here as well. You can also through um, Parks Canada, you, there is a picnic program where you can order it and get it picked up and bring your picnic over here to have. Um, it's just kind of cool to walk around the island. It really is. Like we just keep stopping and there's like a big ship over there right now there is really cool things we haven't decided there is a tunnel tour that you can do but you have to do the guided tour i don't think it costs extra no. it's just you have to sort of sign up and you can't just mm -hmm. um walk your way through and it's where they used to store ammunition and stuff um but yeah really cool how much you can walk around and actually touch and see and yeah and they get they give you this cool map and uh you can do your little self-guided tour they have like 22 different yep. um spots um and there's signage at each spot explaining yeah. what used to happen and all that kind of stuff so um just really cool like you could come here and you could spend a day or half a day and have a picnic like jen was saying and all that kind of stuff um just a really cool spot so if you're in halifax put that on your to-do list also there seems to be kids running around doing some kind of scavenger hunt so that's kind of cool gets them involved and just a little more maybe interested <laughs> all right so right behind me is the maritime museum of the atlantic um, we have not gone in don't quite have enough time today but definitely something you can put on your list if you're um, in halifax and jan what do we have behind you well right outside the museum at the wharves is the last oh sorry wrong side over here is the last corvette so that was a warship during the wars you can actually go in there and i think it's only for a donation um we have stepped inside there before it's pretty cool you get to wander through um on this old uh fighter ship and then over here now this is just we got lucky and i think we said this yesterday the blue nose 2 happens to be sitting here i'm not sure if you can check the schedule where that is i believe there is a schedule online of where the blue nose is because it goes between lunenburg and halifax harbor from what i understand i'm not sure if it does any cameos anywhere else so you can always check that out down here as well so ties right in with the maritime museum i think having these sort of historic um 
well this is blue nose too is obviously a replica of the original blue nose and i think that guy's real that corvette so and little note my grandpa actually um when he was serving served on a ship exactly like that We just got our flight here at uh, Oxford. So this is a Garrison uh, Brewing Company tap room. And um, it is amazing presentation. Pretty awesome uh, presentation on the flight, man. So these are all Mitch's beers. That's why all he's got all the stuff written facing him. These are all my sours. It is gorgeous. This might be the best presentation of a flight that I've seen. This is like really cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we're just gonna go in. Uh, Time to get our drink. We're on. gonna get our drink on, and we are also waiting for some garlic fingers that are coming from next door from King of Don Air. So we'll come back and try those for you. We ate many Halifax specialties while we were in town, but we decided to bring you all of that in a separate video. So stay tuned next week when we dig into fresh lobster, the infamous Dawn Air, and garlic fingers, so we can find out what all this hype is about. Anyway, so if you like this video, give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please, uh, you know, consider subscribing. And uh, we appreciate you watching week after week. And uh, I think on that note... Until um, next week. Until next week. Cheers. Cheers.